Guys, what's going on, man? Welcome back to another ESL podcast. Happy April. If you guys are watching this or listening to this on April, I kind of messed up the whole podcast schedule because I thought March had only 30 days. And yeah, I got completely, I got it completely wrong. But nonetheless, man, if you guys are listening to this, man, happy April and happy end of the first quarter of this year. So we're going to be getting into some good old Atoll Full IBT speaking question part four today. Now, for those of you who are following me on Instagram, you guys get this immediately. Why? Because I love you guys so much, right? So make sure you guys are following me on my ESL podcast page. It's the exact same name as the podcast. You can follow me on Instagram and you'll be getting these videos very, very, very quickly. All right. Now, other times you're going to have to wait maybe a week, two weeks, up to four weeks, even six weeks, right? So make sure you get on over there and you follow me. Now, for those of you watching on Facebook, you're lucky because I really don't post much on Facebook anymore. What the hell is that? Oh, I look like a dragon. Uh, I really don't post much on Facebook or YouTube anymore, but I decided today because it's April or be because it's March 31st that I'm going to post it there. So you make sure you get on that ESL podcast page or you follow my ESL podcast in general on Spotify or whatever you know, uh, search engine you actually use or whatever podcast platform you use. So with that being said, guys, we're going to be getting into a lot. So I got to make sure I hurry up and screen share, share the computer sound. What I have here, yes, it's in blog form. I'm going to take the notes. I'm going to come up with the structure. This is what we're going to be going over because recently I have been coaching some students and she said, Arsenio, to be honest, these, this speaking or these speaking part four questions are a little too difficult. It's not this difficult on the test. And I'm like, okay, well, that's good. But at the same token, if you want to score a 26, it's better to train hard so the test is easy rather than doing what's easy on YouTube and then get into the test and get in a 25, although you need a 26 in the speaking mark. So guys, keep that in mind because it's always better to do what is hard rather than doing what is easy, okay? Preparing for the test by, by having a very difficult preparation so that when you come to the test, it's all about execution. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to take down all the notes, and then I'm going to show you exactly what notes I took down, how much time I'm going to allocate to different sections, write down a couple of things so you guys can make sense of everything. And again, this is going to be in blog form. So you guys can see right up here in the browser, if you guys are watching me on Instagram or you might probably see it in the ticker down below, thearseniobuckshow.com. That's going to completely renew into something totally different coming up soon because I'm going to have lots of online courses for you guys. But nonetheless, for now, that's where my blogs are, okay? So you get your behinds on over there and you follow the blog. So in saying that, let's get into this. This specific audio is going to be about why insects make sounds, okay? With that being said, here we go. Get your notepad, get your pencil, and it's time to boogie woogie. Hello, everyone. Let's talk about the sounds insects make and why they make it. You know, insects make sounds that carry messages to other insects of the same kind for different purposes. The most common one is to alert each other of danger. Another is to communicate with others while looking for food resources. So, in the life of an insect, the pupil stage following the larval stage and preceding adulthood is the stage when insects are inactive and unable to move. Now, when their parents are out searching for food, they are susceptible to attacks by predators. So, the only way to protect themselves against predators is to make a sound to alert their parents that predators are near. Once their parents hear the sound, they will come back and protect them, either by taking them to a different place or fighting the predator. Making sounds to warn their parents of danger is very common in the insect world. So another purpose for making sounds is communication during searches for food resources. This is a strategy used by many insects. For example, a lot of insects feed on the leaves of trees and they are constantly searching for a new source of fresh new leaves. 
Once their current resource of leaves has turned old, they will make a sound to communicate that it is time to look for a different resource of leaves. Likewise, once they find new resources of leaves, they will make a sound to communicate its location. Okay, so I had to, you know what's really tricky about this one, right? It's the fact that the majority of what I was writing, I wasn't exactly sure. And I was like, okay, is he going to give me some kind of linker indicating that he's getting into the first example? Sometimes they won't do that. But to be honest with you, I believe on the test, they're going to give very, very clear linkers. Okay, so it's going to say, okay, so number one would be alert. Number two would be communicating for food resources, right? So these are the notes I've taken. Now, again, a lot of you were probably writing things down and you're like, well, listen, you're probably not going to write down as much as you're typing. Obviously not. So a lot of the prepositions and basic household uh, function words, I probably wouldn't have written down and it would be just a bunch of content words, but it's up to you to put it all together. So let me go over my notes first. It says, insects make sounds that carry messages. And again, I misspell messages, but do not care about misspelling anything. It's all about getting your ideas straight, right? Carry messages to other insects for different purposes, okay? Number one, alert. Number two, communicate for free resources. Now, here we go. If we look at this, if you would like to add in what I had written, the pupil stage following larvae and adulthood, inactive and unable to move, ultimately making them susceptible to attacks by predators. So if you would like to, now, given the fact that we don't have that many notes in general, you can add that in with the introduction. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. Then, right after that, I ended up writing, make a sound to alert parents when predators are nearby. That goes to the first example, as you see, number one, alert. Which then, the parents take them to a different place, or they end up fighting off the predator, making it a very common way to alert, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, it's funny because I was like, okay, are we going to get into the example? So I got a little bit thrown off because I know there were other things that he had said, but I said, okay, well, that's just going to be a relatively short one. Or I can add in pupil stage following larvae and adulthood susceptible to attacks along with that number one. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. Now, number two. Communication during food searches. This was obviously easier. So my notes were insects feed on leaves of trees. So searching for a new source of fresh new leaves and current resource, if, it's, um, if the current resource is old, they will make a sound to look for new leaves. Likewise, once they find the new leaves, they will make a sound to communicate its location. Right, so I put that all together. So if we go into the bulk of this, people, and if I could actually write down, if I could down here, what I'm gonna do is write down, okay, the lecture is about, I have to go back up to the topic, why insects make sounds, okay? And the main reason behind that would be so that they can carry messages to other insects for different purposes. So the lecture is about, here we go. Let's go back. We don't have to like obviously write down the entire introductions or the entire inter introduction. The lecture is about insects and the reasons behind why they make sounds. Now going back up to the introduction, why they make sounds and the different purposes behind uh, sound making or behind this type of communication. There it is, okay? I literally just created an introduction. So it says the lecture is about insects and the reasons behind why they make sounds and the different purposes behind this type of communication, okay? Then he gives, what you would then say is he gives two explanations to why they make sounds. 
this could take up about four to five seconds. This is your transition going into the bulk, right? The first explanation is alert. And if you want to take a little bit more time because you're scared that you might not fulfill the one minute, you can introduce the, you could give an internal preview. An internal preview is stating one and two and then get it into the intro, but you're gonna reiterate. It's not gonna hurt your score, but you're given an internal preview so that it buys a little bit time if you do not have that many notes, okay? Keep that in mind. The first explanation is alert, and the second, what, the second is to communicate during food searches. Got it? So, the reason behind why they need to alert one another is the simple fact that, you see what I mean? It's the simple fact that when predators are near and the parents aren't there, they need to communicate to their parents for the parents to come back to either move them to a different place or to fight off the predator. This is a very common alert. Now, you see that I skipped those two sentences because again, it's entirely up to you exactly how or where you would like to place those two sentences, such as, obviously, if you guys are listening, pupil stage following larvae in adulthood, inactive and unable to move, susceptible to attacks by predators, okay? Now, you could say the first reason is to alert because while they're at the pupil stage following the larvae in the adulthood, they're inactive and unable to move. So that makes them prone to attacks by predators. So what insects do is they make a sound to alert their parents for when predators are near. What then happens is the parents come back to move them to a different place or to fight off the predators. This is a very common alert that insects use. The second one would be the communication during food searches. And then you would go into obviously the four details that I had written down below. Insects feed on leaves of trees, searching for new food source, fresh new leaves, Current when this current resource becomes old, they make a sound to look for new leaves. And once they find the new batch of new leaves, they make a sound to communicate its location. Do you see how I put that all together? So this is very good in regards to a breakdown because what I did, those two sentences are critical because I know more than likely some of you may have written it down, but you're like, damn, I don't know, do I put this in the introduction or do I put this at the beginning of my number one in regards to an alert? Well, if you take out those two sentences, you basically have three sentences, one being very short for your first big example, which is the alert. So make a sound to alert predators when, I'm sorry, make a sound to alert parents when predators are near, taking them to a different place or fighting off the predator, okay? Those are the only two big sentences for number one, explanation one. So this is why I personally would add in the pupil stage following larvae and adulthood. They're inactive and unable to move. Therefore, they are susceptible to attacks by predators. Then I would link it into, so they make a sound to alert parents when predators are near. You see where I'm going with this. So in saying that, if you make a very long introduction, this might make you scared in regards to, oh my God, am I gonna have enough time? So it's good to keep the introduction short in regards to what I had written down below. And then you could transition, either given an internal preview or not. It depends where the time is, okay? Because if you're sitting at 25 seconds already or 20 seconds, to hell with the internal preview, drop it. And by doing that, you would say, Okay, and he gives two explanations to why they make sounds. The first one is to alert. And the reason for this being is pupils and the larvae, they, 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 you see what I mean? And then you would transition into number two. So then I'm literally letting go of that internal preview. Now you would put the internal preview if you're sitting at about 12, 13, 14, 17 seconds. 
because I don't want you to have to add a conclusion. Conclusions are only added if you finish around the 50 second mark. We wanna avoid conclusions. We wanna make sure we get to that 57 second mark and then we can hurry up and end it. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So this is a very detailed type of speaking question. I'm very glad that I went into this. Um, huh, and saying that I would like to hear some of your explanations on my ESL podcast Instagram. So make sure you get on over there, send it to me. I'll even give you like some advice in regards to it for free because I'm just an amazing human being. And with that being said, if you guys are interested because it's April 1st or because it's March 31st, Patreon and everything's gonna be re renewing uh, April 1st. So if you guys are interested in obviously coaching in four different areas, the membership is $50 a month plus two free coaching hours and a lot of exclusive content that's already on there. Uh, if you need coaching hours in general, because you need to get that score, that's available too. You can ask me for anything in regards to prices. And with that being said, man, I'll be seeing you guys soon. Thanks so much for tuning in to another IGTV podcast video, whatever it may be. I'm your host as always, over and out.